Hello ladies and gentlemen, Dead Island 2 was recently delayed until April 28th, 2023, but as of recently I thought hey, let's take a trip back to the past around the time of Gamescom a few months back. Around then, multiple media outlets had some time with the game to share their impressions and thoughts. There was a demo they played that lasted around 20 minutes, with the main location taking place on the Santa Monica Pier. The goal was to search for a laptop containing a blood drive for reasons unknown, having to power up the ferris wheel and other attractions around, while facing off against many zombies including Butcho the Clown, which we've seen it looks creepy as hell. For this video, we'll be taking a look back at a few of the many early access impressions released a few months ago, as well as learn more about the story mission they played. So let's see what some people thought so you could build some general impressions of your own. Ed from Rock Paper Shotgun said in their early review, From the brief stint I had with Dead Island 2, I've come away surprised that it's not at all janky given its development history. I'm fairly convinced that it'll be a fairly fun ride, and perhaps not actually change an enormous amount from Graham's first hands-on playtest 8 years ago. Polygon stated, The result of Dead Island 2 is a game that feels something of a time warp. That's not a value judgment. There's as much that feels refreshing about the straightforward approach Dame Buster has taken as there is that seems simplistic or outdated about it. Barring its technical advances, Dead Island 2 picks up just where the series left off and feels like it could have come out in 2015 when it was initially supposed to. It's a pulpy, wisecracking, ultra-violent first-person action RPG with its sights set firmly on making zombie killing fun again. Like most first-person melee combat systems, it's a little sloppy, but this isn't entirely out of keeping for a game about bludgeoning walking corpses. It is also genuinely tactical and flexible. Rather than overwhelm the player with hordes of disposable enemies, Dylan 2 introduces them in smaller numbers that hit pretty hard. It's a far cry from the exhilarating, free-willing, and open traversal of Dying Light 2, but maybe that's the point, and maybe it's no bad thing. Keeping Dead Island 2's feet on the ground and keeping it simple might be the best way to move on from its difficult past. Coming from Giovanni at Digital Trends, after spending so much time in development hell, the prognosis is healthy for Dead Island 2. The slice I have played showed off a polished action RPG with carefully considered melee combat and a playful tone. Even if you're sick of zombies at this point in your life, Dan Buster Studios found a new way to slice the genre up with a gleefully grotesque approach to body horror. Jess from the loadout stated, While well, I'm still reserving my judgment on the game until we see Dan Buster explain the skill tree, upgrade system, and more of the story, I'm feeling positive so far. Dead Island 2 is exactly what you want from a game that spent 10 years in the making. It's gory, engaging, fast-paced, and more importantly, it's fun. Matt at IGN had a few impressions being, It's obvious that Dead Island 2 isn't just alive, but kicking too. While it may have risen from the grave, though it still has a lot to prove, Dan Buster has made a solid first impression, but it comes coupled with a distinct sense of familiarity. Dead Island 2 appears to share a huge amount of common ground with not just the original Dead Island, but its step-sibling, Dying Light. For long-term fans, this may be exactly what they want to hear, but even at this early stage, I'm already struck with a sense of having played this all before. The gory combat, the weird weapons, the crafting, the oddball humor. After one Dead Island game, an expansion, and two Dying Lights, it's all feeling a bit parts of the same corpse. PC Gamer had some time with the demo for which they state, Dead Island 2 is far from novel and any hope of twists or compelling narrative lay beyond the scope of the demo. But still, there's something intriguing in it. It presents the zombie apocalypse as something its characters are forced to live with. Its heroes are immune but infected, carrying the disease without turning into zombies themselves. Meaning leaving quarantined LA isn't an option. Unable to escape, our heroes are chasing momentary joys in a bleak, broken world as they fight for their lives. This might be a bit relatable to a bunch of people right now. While it absolutely lacks originality, it excels in some of its executions. There's no knowing if it has an enthralling campaign to tie it all together, but in its fights, the game kills. For the great combat, it's worth keeping an eye on on this unexpected comeback. And that's all the reviews I feel like reading for today. As of now, I feel that's enough for you to build some general impressions. Overall, I see most of the media being fairly positive, saying the game isn't going above and beyond in many ways, but it's a ton of fun. So there's many good signs here for a game that's been in development hell for nearly a decade. I definitely recommend to check out the rest of the articles I showcase in this video, as mainly I focus it on their overall thoughts. But there's a lot to see and a lot to read, especially for those who want to learn more about the game's card system or story. A lot of this info I'll compile and talk about in a separate video, but all the information is there if you want to check it out for yourself. But anyways though, thanks for watching and tuning in everyone! Like the video, subscribe if you want, and be sure to stop by next time. Adios.